What's up guys, welcome to my spoiler discussion of Spider-Man No Way Home, a film that fans are going wild about, critics are going wild about, and a film that I don't think is perfect, but is still a really good film. It's weird because there's a lot of big spoilers in this film, but all of the spoilers were called so early on. Literally, I don't think anything that happened in this film, apart from Aunt May dying, wasn't predicted by all the fans. You know, the Spider-Man coming back, Daredevil appearing, Andrew saving MJ. There wasn't too much surprise in there, I don't think, but the emotional hype was still there and it still did deliver. I really do think the Spider-Man returning was handled with a lot of sincerity and a lot of respect. Andrew Garfield is my Spider-Man, you know, I'm not a die-hard Tobey Maguire fan. I think objectively speaking, those films have aged horrendously and apart from Spider-Man 2, they're quite bad films. But Amazing Spider-Man is kind of my Spider-Man, Andrew Garfield is my Peter Parker. And I think even objectively speaking, Andrew Garfield stole the show in every scene he was in, emotionally, comically, I think he delivers the kind of Peter Parker charm and quips better than any of the others and that really showed when he was on screen with all three of them. But I still really liked how they handled Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, he's always been the more quiet, reserved type and it was nice to see him have that kind of mentor, paternal role in this film. And I did love all of the scenes with the Spider-Man in, you know, even though it was pure fan service. The only thing I didn't like was the actual scene where they returned. The scene had a more playful tone than kind of an epic, dramatic tone. Um, and it just, it just kind of felt a bit off that Ned and MJ got to have that moment with the Spider-Man first. And the whole Ned with magic thing, come on, that, that really, really got on my nerves. And I really like Ned in Homecoming and Far From Home. I think he, he, was a, he had that kind of adorable, innocent charm to him that I think we were starting to move away from with this film. So his kind of constant undercutting of that seriousness really started to get on my nerves. And the whole fact that he did magic and could open those portals almost instantaneously where it took Stephen Strange a good portion of his own standalone film to master that. It just felt like it was being used as a plot point and a gimmick rather than a solid kind of character developing moment. So I had a lot of problems with that. But no, all the other scenes with the Spider-Man returning I loved. I loved them working together in the lab. I especially loved their first scene with Tom Holland where they kind of share their grief and their loss. Again, Andrew Garfield steals the show in that, and later with that cathartic moment where he rescues MJ, I think he conveys so much with his acting and his eyes. And I still think the death of Gwen Stacy in Amazing Spider-Man 2 is one of the ballsiest decisions a superhero film has ever made. Um, I don't think any MCU film that I can recall has killed off a love interest and Andrew Garfield kind of kills me in that scene every time. I think The Amazing Spider-Man 2, just on a side note, is one of the most underrated Spider-Man films, like hands down. I just wish we got a bit more kind of web-slinging action with them in the final battle because I was quite let down by the final battle. I think the pacing of it was kind of all over the place with how they'd stop and talk to every villain after fighting them and then Goblin would return. It just didn't have the kind of urgency and intensity I think it needed as a grand finale. And it was kind of hard to distinguish at times between the Spider-Man as they were swinging around. But, you know, it was beautiful to see them kind of interlocking webs, swinging together. It really is a once-in-a-lifetime moment, and it was really satisfying to see. Just wish we got a bit more of it. And that brings me on to the action of this film. I've never liked the action in MCU Spider-Man films. I think they look too fake. The CGI on Tom Holland's Spider-Man has never looked as good as Andrew Garfield's. And again, a lot of the action in this film just feels like your typical overabundance of CGI. But the fist fights that we got in this film were fantastic. We get to see Tom Holland throw down with Goblin twice. Um, I think the, the apartment fight had a lot more kind of emotional impact. But that final fight was also fantastic. And you feel it because it's real. Because it is that visceral, brutal, two actors throwing punches at each other. It lands in a way that the CGI fights just don't. So that was really refreshing to see. And Tom Holland really shone in this film more than he did in any of the others. I think the seriousness of the tone and kind of forcing him to grow up and face his consequences just worked wonders for the character and the franchise in general. I've never been that attached to Aunt May in these films. I don't really like her iteration of the character. So her death in this film, it did land for me. It did really work, but more because of Tom Holland's acting in it than 
Aunt May's actual character. I, I really couldn't care that much, but what it meant for Peter Parker and the way Tom Holland sells it was really powerful and really well handled. And they almost had us with that stabbing of Tobey Maguire at the end, which I thought was completely unnecessary. Um, because they did nothing with it. You have that gasp moment of, oh my God, have they just killed off the OG Spider-Man? But then that quickly subsides into a more kind of just, you know, off-kilter comedy. And it just, it felt so unnecessary. It just felt like it undercut the, the seriousness and the impact of Tobey Maguire looking Peter in the eyes, communicating, no, this, is, this isn't the way. I love Goblin. Willem Dafoe is just so good at that kind of sinister cackle and, and those expressions. And I really like Doc Ock returning as well. I don't think Electro, Lizard or Sandman had any real kind of weight to them it was very much they were there for the sake of it and completing the nostalgia but they didn't have much in the way of an arc uh, well I suppose Electro did have an arc quite literally speaking I was really impressed by Doctor Strange I thought from the trailers oh my god he's going to be used as like a comedic gimmick and he's going to constantly be outsmarted by Peter Parker which he kind of is at times but I think he just brings a kind of gravitas to the role that really emphasises the kind of tonal consequences we're facing in the film. And as a die-hard Netflix Daredevil fan, seeing him return, albeit brief, was such a refreshing treat. It was genuinely probably about a third of the hype I had for this film was just to see Daredevil. I do wish that portion of the film had been expanded. I think for such a big cliffhanger in Far From Home, they brushed over the whole identity reveal thing so quickly. And I would have, I think it would have lent to the tone of the narrative really well had they spent longer with Peter getting bombarded by the media and kind of facing all these legal troubles. And I think it would have been a better introduction for Daredevil to kind of see him winning the case for Peter Parker rather than just getting the phone call saying, yeah, he's off the hook. So I, I feel like we glossed over what, what could have been a very maturing and dramatic part of the film um, just to quickly get to the kind of Doctor Strange undo all this for me kind of stuff. But I really did love it. I, I loved the score. I loved the hints at the original theme and at the amazing Spider-Man theme that came in the end. I think it delivers where it needs to deliver, and which is in the emotions. But I think it is still easily Tom Holland's best performance as Spider-Man. It's easily the best Spider-Man film we've had in the MCU. And it is going to be a treat for diehard fans. The kind of diehard fanatic Spider-Man fans won't be able to find fault with this film. And that's okay because it does emotionally get you hyped up. It does deliver when it needs to deliver. I don't think it's a perfect film. I, I think everyone's kind of kidding themselves if, if, if they're putting it as number one in their superhero film list. But I think it is a really good film. It, it does rely so much on that kind of nostalgia and fan service to make it work. It will just be a bit more interesting now with Tom Holland going forward as, as more of a solo act, I suppose, if, if the ending is to be believed how he'll kind of handle that because I did think he held his own here really well but that's because he had so much emotional trauma to deal with in this film. I think it's testament to the film that it delivers on all the emotional promises even though we pretty much knew everything that was going to happen. It does tie up three generations of Spider-Man in a way that makes you miss them and cherish them at the same time. But yeah, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know there's going to be a lot of fanatics who can't find fault with this film and that's fine. You're wrong, but that's fine. Liking and subscribing would also be a huge help for my channel if you like what you see. But in the meantime, take care. I've got some original content coming soon, as well as hopefully a few more reviews and a ranking of all the Spider-Man slash Venom films. So, oh, oh, speaking of Venom, thank God, thank God they took him out of the universe at the end and just left that blob. I got really worried in that post credit scene that we were getting Venom. I'm sure the MCU is going to find a way to bring Tom Hardy's Venom into it again, but I am so reassured that for now he's been, that he's been kind of taken away because the Venom films are diabolical, frankly. Please, let's keep those god-awful films out of this franchise. But yeah, that's me. See you next time.